Hello, dorks. Welcome back to yet another educational English video. As most of you guys know, last week the world lost a superhero. Chadwick Boseman, the amazing actor who played T'Challa, the King of Wakanda, aka the Black Panther, and many other amazing roles throughout his acting career, passed away from colon cancer. So this week we don't have many jokes, so I, it's going to be a little bit different from the usual tongue-in-cheek, funny English lessons. Instead, this week we're going to learn English while celebrating Chadwick Boseman's amazing career as the Black Panther. Before we jump into this video, let me quickly ask everybody to please stick around all the way to the end. All ad revenue in this video is going to be given to the Colon Cancer Coalition. This is an amazing organization that raises awareness about, uh, about colon cancer. They raise funds to provide screening for colon cancer, and they spend their time educating people on colon cancer. There's a link in the description down below to this organization's webpage, and like I said, all revenue made from this video will be directly donated to them. If you like what you see in this video and you want to see more content like this, hopefully not in the same context because it would be a shame to lose yet another amazing actor or actress, but if you like to learn English while watching movies and TV shows, make sure you hit the like button and you subscribe to the channel. And if you have a request for a video you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. And lastly, join us over on Discord because we have a lot of amazing stuff going on over there. And now, let's learn some English. Alright guys, one of the absolute best things about watching movies or watching TV shows to help you learn is that you get to hear other people speak and you get to learn new words and vocabulary. And, and it's a great way to improve your, your listening skills as well as your speaking skills because you get to add those words to the things that you want to say. The thing that made the Black Panther character quite hard to follow for non-native English speakers is that he actually uses the Kosa accent. Now, Kosa is a language that derives in uh, South Africa and Zimbabwe. Now, these countries are, <laughs> they're in Africa, right? And, and so he uses this very native African accent to portray his character. So today we're going to listen very closely to the way that he speaks and the things that he's saying to help us improve with new words and new phrases that we can use in our diction. The Black Panther has been the protector of Wakanda for generations. A mantle passed from warrior to warrior. Now, because your friend murdered my father, I also wear the mantle of king. So I ask you, as both warrior and king, how long do you think you can keep your friend safe from me? In this clip here, we heard T'Challa say the word mantle two times. The first time he said it, he was talking about being the Black Panther, and the second time he said it was when he took the mantle of king from his father. Now usually when we use the word mantle, we're actually talking about a play, a shelf over your fireplace. That's your fire mantle or your fireplace, the mantle over the fireplace, right? So in this way that he's talking about that word, it actually follows a different definition which isn't as widely used and that means to take the title passed down from somebody else. So the mantle of king, the title of king, got passed down to him when his father passed away. His father was also the Black Panther before him and the mantle of Black Panther was passed down to him when he became big enough and strong enough to be the Black Panther. Vengeance has consumed you. He's consuming them. I'm done letting it consume me. Justice will come soon enough. Tell that to the dead. The living are not done with you yet. So before we talk about this clip, I want to express this is actually my 
favorite clip out of all of the films that Black Panther was in, this is my favorite thing that he has to say. When he confronts Baron Zemo, he tells him that he was consumed by vengeance, that Zemo was consumed by vengeance, and the Avengers were consumed by vengeance. And there were two really amazing words that were being used. The first one is the word consumed. Usually when we talk about something being consumed or consuming something, we're talking about eating it or drinking it. But when you use consume this way, it actually becomes a bit of an idiom. What he's saying when he says somebody is consumed by something, it means they are getting eaten up by the idea. They're getting surrounded by the idea and all they can think about is the idea. And what idea was it in this context? It was vengeance. So vengeance is when you seek revenge violently against somebody or something that has harmed you or somebody else. So in this sense, T'Challa was seeking vengeance. He wanted revenge against Bucky or the Winter Soldier for killing his father. He was consumed by vengeance because that's all he wanted to do was get revenge. He didn't think about the big picture. He didn't look into what was completely happening. He just wanted to kill Bucky Barnes in revenge. That is vengeance. Both of these cases, Baron Zemo and the Black Panther, were consumed by the idea of getting vengeance against uh, Bucky Barnes or the Avengers. And let me just quickly say that the ending of this clip was absolutely fascinating. The line, the living world is not done with you yet, and he makes him live. He makes the guy who killed his father live to face justice. Now I have to ask, if you were in that situation, would you let the man who killed your father live so they can see justice? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's move on to the next clip. It is my responsibility to make sure our people are safe and that vibranium does not fall into the hands of a person like you. Son, we have entertained the charlatan for too long. Reject his request. Oh, I ain't requesting nothing. Ask who I am. You're Eric Stevens, an American black operative, a mercenary nicknamed Killmonger. That's who you are. That's not my name, princess. Ask me, King. No. Ask me. Take him away. Ungubani! Indingu in Jadaka! Unyanaka in Jobu! Huh? Unyanaka in Jobu? I found my daddy with panther claws in his chest! You ain't the son of a king, you are the son of a murderer! We have all seen, son! Lies! I'm afraid not, Queen Mother. Huh? What? You in Danda to Jobu? Hey, Auntie. Here is another fantastic clip from the series. This one comes from the Black Panther film. We have Killmonger, the main villain in the story, confronting T'Challa and the other members of in the throne room about his royal rights. At the very beginning of this clip, the Queen Mother refers to him as being a charlatan. Now, a charlatan is somebody who commits fraud or they, they make up stories, they, they're liars, uh, trying to get people to do what they want. Now this word really isn't used in modern times. You won't really hear young people say charlatan. Maybe grandparents will say charlatan. I don't even think my parents would say charlatan. So uh, the word charlatan just refers to a person committing fraud or somebody who's lying to get something they want. Now charlatan isn't used, but fraud is. In this day and age, you would call somebody a fraud. Oh, he's a fraud, or, you know, they're, they're committing fraud. So then she calls him a fraud, basically, she calls him a fraud, and then quickly gets taken aback when you find out that he is part of the royal family. What does he call her? Well, he calls her auntie. He says, hello, auntie. And auntie is a way that we refer to people that have the title aunt in the United States. So we usually don't refer to people as title and name, we'll just call them by their title. So when you see your aunts or your uncle, you'll call them auntie or uncle, like, hey auntie, how are you today? Or hey uncle, how are you today? So it's a bit tongue in cheek and a little bit funny because it's a really tense situation and he just kinda, hi auntie. I don't need a suit to kill you. The rain is over. You stand up here safe and protected. You want to see us become just like the people you hate so much. Divide and conquer the land as they did. No, I learned from my enemies. Beat them at their own game. You have become them. 
You would destroy the world, Wakanda included. The world took everything away from me. Everything I ever loved. But I'm gonna make sure we're even. I'm gonna track down anyone who would even think about being loyal to you. And I'm gonna put the ass in the dirt right next to Zuri. So this clip has Killmonger and T'Challa arguing angrily over what they plan to do. T'Challa is reminding him that he is wrong and that he's acting no better than the English and the European colonizers of Africa. And, and this is quite historic where he's talking about how all of these people destroyed Africa. And it's true, they did. Uh, Africa is, is rich in minerals and, and wildlife and all sorts of other things, but it will never really see its economic power because of what happened to them all this time ago. And, and the crazy thing is, it's, it's a very interesting argument that T'Challa and, and Killmonger have because both of them are kind of right in their own ways. And both of them are also kind of wrong in their own ways. However, the important thing to take away from this clip is at the very end, Killmonger tells T'Challa that he's going to put him in the dirt. Now, to put somebody in the dirt means you're going to kill them. In North America, we bury our dead, right? We don't really, I mean, people, some people do, but we don't often cremate. Most people bury their family members that pass away. So when you say that you're going to put someone in the dirt, that means that you're going to kill them and bury them, which is what Killmonger plans to do to everybody that T'Challa loves. <laughs> My pop said Wakanda was the most beautiful thing you ever seen. <laughs> he promised he was going to show it to me one day. You believe that? Kid from Oakland running around believing in fairy tales. So here, as Killmonger realizes that he's lost the battle and that he is dying, all of a sudden his attitude shifts from being very aggressive and violent to calm and sad. In the United States, most people refer to their parents, their father, as dad, like, hey dad, or my dad, uh, things like that. Well, you could also use the word pops. That's also common, not as popular as dad, but it is widely used as pops. So what he's saying is that his pops, or his dad, told him that Wakanda was the most beautiful place in the world. And he felt like, you know, his, his, life was stolen because he had to grow up in the United States and he never got to really see how beautiful Wakanda was. And right before the end of the clip, he, he mentions that he was just a kid living in the United States believing in fairy tales. And a fairy tale is a type of story made for children usually that has imaginary places, magical beings. It's not a real story. For example, Beauty and the Beast is a fairy tale, Cinderella is a fairy tale, and even The Little Mermaid is a fairy tale. But the other meaning of fairy tale also refers to a story used to trick people into believing something. It's a lie. Now, Killmonger believes that his idea of Wakanda was a lie because it wasn't what he expected. Maybe we can still heal you. Why? So you could just lock me up? No. Mm -hmm. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Because they knew death was better than bondage. Mm -hmm. <sighs> In our very last clip, we have the line, death is better than bondage. What a powerful line, am I right? I mean, here we have the Black Panther telling his wounded cousin that they can heal him, they can fix him and make him better 
but he doesn't want to be better. He'd rather die because he knows if he lives, he will be a prisoner. And death is better than bondage. That word bondage is quite important because it has a couple different meanings. So the first meaning of bondage is, means to be a slave. And in this sense, he's saying that if he's a prisoner, he'll be a slave, right? He'll be forced to live in prison as a slave. Bondage also refers to a state of being bound or being tied up. So, for example, if you're ever restrained by police officers, well, you're in bondage, technically. In the sense that Killmonger is talking about, he's comparing himself to the slaves of the past who were brought over to the United States by the Dutch Trading Company. And it's a horrible, horrible idea for him to be a prisoner because that means that he will be a slave, therefore being in bondage. Well, that's it for the end of today's clips. Uh, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this content. Um, like I said earlier, I have a link in the description down below for the Colon Cancer Coalition. Uh, I highly suggest going to that website and checking out uh, some information on it. Know your symptoms, know how to get screening, and do yourself the favor and, and, and help us destroy this terrible, terrible disease. Uh, like I said earlier, all monetization on this video will get donated to uh, the Colon Cancer Coalition. And to be honest, guys, my channel doesn't rake in very much money, if money at all, most months. So let me quickly plug their website. If you want to donate, if you have money to donate, donate to them. Don't sign up for my Patreon this month. If you want to sign up for Patreon, donate to the Cancer Coalition instead, the Colon Cancer Coalition instead. Um, we, I do want to apologize because I'm sure I'm not the Sean that you guys usually like to see this week. I know I'm off. I know I'm not happy or chipper or really excited. And there's not really many memes in this video, if any memes at all. Um, and it's obvious why, right? This isn't a happy time for anybody. Um, so I, I hope you guys were still able to enjoy this. If you did, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you guys next week with hopefully a happier video.